we make a better mushroom sauce? I believe we can, my friends. This one is more mushroomy, more creamy, more delish. This is my steak and creamy miso mushroom sauce. Creamy mushroom sauce. Oh, one of my favorites, all time great classic, but I'm gonna make it even better, I think, with just a few little additions and a couple of little techniques to really boost the flavor. Uh, let's get started on that flavor first of all. And the first thing we're gonna do is make a little beefy miso stock. So already a little different to your regular mushroom sauce. Beef stock, I just wanna heat that up gently. Now once I can see some steam happening there, I'm gonna add in my miso paste. So I'm using a white miso paste, also known as sweet miso paste, also known as shiro miso paste. Um, it's kind of like the regular one that you can find most easily. And that's gonna go in here. And this is basically to kind of get it dissolved and infusing that beef stock with that miso flavor. It's gonna add more umami, more savoriness to the sauce. It's a really good addition. Okay, so you don't need to like hard boil this or anything. I'm just waiting for that miso paste to dissolve. And that's looking pretty good. So I'm gonna take that off the heat. And now the mushrooms. So I'm just gonna go with some brown button mushrooms here and also some portobellos, so slightly larger ones. And one of the key differences I think between like a really awesome mushroom sauce and one that's kind of like, mm, uh, is the size of the mushrooms first of all. If you slice them too thin before you get going in the pan, they kind of disintegrate and just kind of left with these little slimy bits of mushroom. I mean, that doesn't sound very attractive at all. So <laughs> what you want are some nice chunky bits of mushroom. So go a little thicker than you think you might need. You know, that's like a good like three centimeters thick there. And now for the button mushrooms, Again, the same idea. I'm just gonna cut them in half. Now, here's a really key part of this recipe. Don't turn away right now. Don't check your Instagram feed. This is it, guys. You wanna get a really good sear on your mushroom. You want a really wide pan, much bigger than you think. A little bit of oil. So no, I'm not starting with butter. That'll come later. I want some oil first. Really hot. Mushrooms go in. And now just spread them out, like get, you know, that cut side down preferably. And now a little sprinkling of salt. The salt is gonna help to like draw out the moisture in those mushrooms. By drawing out the moisture, we're gonna get a better color and sear on those mushrooms. And then don't touch. <laughs> don't be tempted to move them around or anything. I just want them to get some color. In fact, it's just as important that you concentrate on this initial sear of the mushroom as it is on searing your steak. It's gonna make all the difference. Okay, it's been a couple of minutes, so let's have a look at the color. There's plenty of drama here. We've got some steam, we've got some smoke. Perfect, and yes, look at that. See how beautifully golden and caramelized that mushroom is? That is pure flavor. And then check out how dry the pan is. That's the other key thing. So we haven't got mushrooms that are stewing in their juices, we've got them really searing. All right, those are some really good looking mushrooms, my friends. Let's get going on the rest of the stuff that we need. I'm gonna finally slice a shallot. Okay, and so now we're gonna add the butter. I didn't add the butter at the beginning because the milk solids in the butter would have burnt. Uh, and gotten really dark brown and kind of a bit bitter. Not what we want. I just want that butter flavor. So I'm gonna put that in now. And some garlic. Again, if I put the garlic in at the beginning, that would have burnt because I needed that high heat. And those shallots. Oh, that is smelling so good already. I love that garlic mushroom smell. Mm. Okay, let's make things a little special here. Let's put in some thyme. I just throw the whole lot in. I quite like having the sprigs in the sauce. I think it looks nice and rustic. Before that butter colors too much, I wanna deglaze the pan with some alcohol. And I'm gonna use some sake because, you know, doing a bit of a Japanese theme. Some white wine would be good too. 
Now the key here is let that alcohol evaporate until the pan is almost dry. Okay, that liquid's all but gone. Now I'm gonna add in that beefy miso stock. And some cream. Okay, so now what we want to do is let all of those wonderful ingredients in there make really good friends. And we want to wait for that sauce to thicken up a little. Now take a look at that. That is looking creamy and thick and amazing. Just a few little final finishing touches here. I want a little dash of some white pepper. I like the white pepper because it doesn't like take over in terms of flavor. This is all about the mushrooms. So just a little dash there. And then here's another little secret ingredient that you won't really notice the flavor of particularly, but it will kind of lift the whole dish and brighten everything up. And that is lemon zest. So just a couple of little passes with the grater. You don't need the whole thing, that would be too much. And now a little smattering of chives. And that is just looking perfection, my friends. At this point, I'm gonna take it off and it can afford to sit there for a few minutes while I cook my steak. Okay, so fairly standard with the steak here. I want a nice seasoning of salt, just a little touch of oil. I like to start with some oil and then finish off with some butter. That way I get a really nice kind of clean, buttery flavor at the end. Okay, I'm gonna add in my butter. And just to echo some of the flavor in the sauce, I'm gonna add some thyme sprigs in here as well. And now at this point for me with a steak, it's all about basting and turning and basting and turning. And I think that gives you the best kind of texture through the steak and the best sear. So at this point, I'll get my mushroom sauce back onto the heat and warming through. Now, if your sauce has thickened up too much and it starts to look a little grainy, just add in a splash more beef stock or a little bit of water and it will come back to life beautifully. But just look at that gloss and that shine and that, oh, this is gonna be totally lush. Okay, let's put this all together. Steak out and now sauce. Just a little sprinkling more of some of those chives. And there you go, my friends. Oh, this one has got me so excited. Let me just test it out for you, make sure I've done a good job. Oh, this is gonna be good. Mm. Mm. That is Without word of a lie, so ridiculous. I mean, you know, the mushroom is beautifully firm and everything tastes really mushroomy. You know when you get those like steak mushroom sauces and like the mushroom is really slimy and really thin and there's no substance to it? This is, mm, this is all mushroom and then all steak and then creamy and salty and savory and just like, Mm. I'm done. I can retire now. It just doesn't get any better than that. Mm. Yum. Let's just take a moment and have a look at that creamy egg. Whoa, okay, this is hands down the best scrambled eggs I know how to make. These are my miso butter scrambled eggs. All right guys, so I know that there are a lot of like ultimate scrambled egg videos, the best scrambled egg videos. I mean, scrambled eggs, it's all over YouTube. 
This version is my very own special close to my heart version of scrambled eggs that I love so much. I mean, look at the smile on my face. I'm so excited already about how good these eggs are. <laughs> All right, okay, let's get started. There's a few little things that I do a little bit differently, um, but first of all, we're gonna make the butter. Very important, miso butter here. I've got some unsalted butter that I'm gonna be using. This is at room temp, just so it's easier for me to mix. Why unsalted? Let's get into the detail here. So unsalted because I'm gonna add some miso, which is salty. I'm also gonna add salt to the eggs. So I don't wanna overly salt everything. Some miso paste, obviously. This is white miso paste or shiro miso paste. You can experiment with lots of different misos here. Red miso is really great as well, but shiro miso today. Now just mix that through. Now this is way more butter than you need for this dish, but you can use it for so many things, you know, add it into a pasta, uh, finish off a soup with it. The miso just makes it really savory and really lovely and salty and really good. So anywhere you would finish off a dish with butter, that's what you want to use this for. And just get into a little container here. Now the important part about this butter is that I need to get it really cold again before I go to use it because at the end of our scrambled egg dish we need cold butter to arrest the cooking and create like an emulsion, creamy goodness thing. You will see. <laughs> so 10 minutes in the freezer to really chill it down. Patience will be rewarded. Okay, so here we are, butter is nice and firm. Now we can get started on our eggs. So I find about three eggs per person is good. So I'm gonna do a two person today. Now I like to add the salt straight into the eggs. And for me, there is no need to add extra cream or extra milk here because what we really wanna have is that really rich eggy taste. So why would we wanna dilute that? Uh, and we're also gonna be adding fat with the butter. So there's no need to add any extra kind of milky fat here, unless you don't plan on using the right amount of butter, which I plan on using the right amount of butter, which is a lot of butter. Um, so just eggs and salt, that's all you need. And now it's the cooking part here that's ultra important. This is where we're gonna create the creaminess and the magic. So we wanna be careful about the heat. That's the main thing. We want a really gentle heat because a high heat will cook those proteins and make them really tough and hard. And I want soft, luxurious proteins here. So the pan should be warm, but not super hot. You should be able to put your hand in there and actually touch the bottom without it burning. Now, I don't wanna be responsible for burns, so just be careful when you're doing that, but it shouldn't be really hot is the moral of the story. Now, add in your butter. I want a good tablespoon here, maybe a tablespoon and a half. And just let that butter melt. Shouldn't even be foaming. That's how gentle the heat is. Now that the butter is melted, I can go in with my eggs. And now just let them sit, leave them alone to just start to set on the bottom of the pan, about a minute or so. Now see how you can just see a little bit of light setting happening around the edges of the pan. Now we can go in with the spatula. So I wanna, at the beginning here, create some large curds. So just kind of get in there and do a nice gentle push and swirl is so therapeutic and beautiful. This is such a joyous dish to make. Now we've still got our large curds happening here and when I can see that we're starting to lose quite a bit of liquid I'm going to go in a little bit harder and start to mix and break those curds up. Now don't be afraid to take the pan off the heat if you can see that it's getting really hot. And at this point where things are looking still a little liquidy, I wanna add in my cold butter. The cold butter is gonna stop the cooking from happening too harshly and it's gonna create like a little creamy emulsion in there. Don't be shy with that butter. And this is starting to look so magical. And now the egg is still gonna keep cooking so I like to take it off just a smidgen before it's completely cooked through and you should be able to pour it out of the pan. That's when you know you've done a good job here. Now the final touches here. Just a little bit of Parmigiano Reggiano cheese. Look at 
that beautiful glossiness and now a total optional here but I just love a little sprinkling of Japanese sashimi togarashi which is like a little like spice chili powder and there you go guys I mean these eggs let me just try and make sure I mean, it's so ridiculous how good that is. They are so luscious and creamy. Oh, creamy without the cream. It's all in the butter and it's all in that beautiful mixing. Mm. Gordon Ramsay, eat your heart out, my goodness. Mm. Let's film this again. <laughs> I need to eat more. <laughs> This spaghetti is like a triple threat umami bomb. There's miso, there's mushrooms, there's parmesan, all the things combined create one epic, epic pasta. Okay, let's talk about the mushrooms first. And I have this gorgeous array of all these different mushrooms. You can choose whatever's at your local farmer's market or supermarket. I've got some shimeji Japanese mushrooms here and I just need to cut the base off those. Now I've also got some oyster mushrooms and these are so cute in Thai. We call them het nang pha, which means angel mushroom. Just love that. Um, now I just like to cut the bottom, the bottom stem of these is a bit tough. So I cut that off and then I just like to tear these by hand. So I think it gives them a better texture, just the larger pieces. Now time for the king mushroom. These guys have so much flavor and boy, do they love butter. Ah, oh, mushrooms and butter something so special about that combination. So I just want to slice these. I'm just going to cut sort of bigger pieces into smaller bite-sized pieces. And I've got a few button mushrooms here. Now I don't think you've got to go out and get like a billion mushrooms to make this pasta. It's just as good if you just use one or two types or even just a plain button mushroom like these ones. And the shiitakes. Now the stem on the shiitake is also a little bit tough for me. So I take those off and then just slice those. And finally, some enoki mushrooms. And I love the texture of these. They go all silky and soft, but I'm gonna leave them separate to the others because they just need to go in at the last minute. Otherwise they overcook a little. Okay, so that's my mushrooms all done and prepared. So now we're gonna get on to the pasta sauce. Now butter first, and then just a little dash of vegetable oil. You could use olive oil as well. Once that butter is foaming, I'm gonna add my mushrooms in. And then just a little bit of salt. So the miso is going to be salty. So we just want a little bit here just to help draw out the moisture from those mushrooms. And now just let these sit for a while. I really wanna get a bit of color on the bottom of these. So I'm not gonna mess around with them too much at the beginning. Now I can start to smell that butter and mushroom caramelization happening. So I'm gonna turn these over. Ah, oh, and already we're seeing some lovely golden color. So at this point I want to get my spaghetti started and I'm going to really heavily salt that water. Always salt your water for pasta. Let's grab my spaghetti. Okay, just let that bubble away. And now that I've got the lovely color on my mushroom, I'm going to add the garlic now because sometimes I find if I add it at the beginning, it burns before I get the mushrooms cooked properly. Right, now these mushrooms have a beautiful color. They're nice and soft. Time to add my miso paste. So this is just a, a white miso paste or a shiro miso paste. And then I want to scoop off a whole bunch of that pasta water. I'm trying to get the part where it's foamy because that's got the starch. And that goes into our pan to make the sauce. So at this point you do want the sauce to be quite liquidy. I'm gonna cook this pasta al dente or just before al dente and then I'm gonna finish the cooking off in the pan and that pasta's gonna soak up all of that awesome liquid. Okay, pasta's looking good. I'm gonna get that straight into these mushrooms. And now I leave the heat on and then I'm just gonna stir everything together and just like magic, that pasta is gonna soak up that sauce and everything is gonna get super creamy and luscious. And I wanna add in those enoki mushrooms. They'll just cook at the last second. And some spring onion. Generous grating of Parmesan cheese. Now that is one good looking pan of pasta. Now all we need is a giant bowl Pile it all up and one more little sprinkling of parmesan. 
the ultimate chunky chocolate peanut butter, did I say chocolate? <laughs> um, cookie, this guy is so loaded. And yeah, there's like a few little secret ingredients here. These are my choc peanut butter crack cookies. Well, I've literally eaten like 50 of these <laughs> and I still love them. <laughs> oh my goodness, <laughs> we have to get these out of our lives. We've got to get rid of them. Don't make any more. We can't make any more. All right, these cookies are like so loaded with so much stuff and we have literally been testing them for weeks, haven't we guys? Have we been testing them for weeks? <laughs> I've literally eaten so many of these. Um, but the good news is that we now have the perfect recipe just for you. So let's get into this recipe, shall we? First off, we want some butter. Now we need a mix here of brown sugar and some caster sugar. Now we want to mix this until everything is well combined and kind of creamy like. Okay, so once things are looking a bit like this, then you just want to scrape everything down. And now we go in with some fun things the start of the fun things. Uh, first of all, some miso paste. So this is gonna add uh, a little salty kind of kick to everything, which just makes things so much more yum, I think. All right, so miso goes in and some peanut butter. Now I'm a crunchy kind of girl, so you could go smooth. I like crunchy. Are you smooth or crunchy? Let me know, Dax, are you smooth or crunchy? What are you? Uh, crunchy. You crunchy? All the way. Hayley? Crunchy. crunchy. All the good people like crunchy. <laughs> okay, give this a mix. Okay, so once things are looking like they're very well mixed in there, um, just scrape that bowl down again. Now we need an egg. And just another little hit of salt. So, you know, obviously I don't want this to be overly salty, but I think when you add that extra element of salt to sweet things, you really, I don't know, like it accentuates the sweetness, it accentuates all the flavors. So yeah, I mean, I really like it. Salty, the chocolate, the peanut butter, oh, it all works so well. Okay, give that another mix. Okay, so we're gonna go with some flour here. Now, I'm using a low protein or what might be known as a cake or cookie flour, uh, which you can find in your baking section in the supermarket. Look, that's just gonna give you like a lighter, um, crispier kind of cookie. But if you've just got all purpose or plain flour, that's cool as well. Now, what I do wanna do is just get a third, about a third of that flour in first, and I'm gonna mix that in, and that's gonna to help to keep things nice and smooth and not get those lumpy, floury bits. Okay, let's do that first. So now we can add in the baking powder and the rest of our flour. Oh, I tell you what, like this is already smelling so good, like the peanut and the, ah, oh, yum. Okay, so let's grab this out. Now we can add in even more fun stuff. Okay, I have got some chocolate here and I would rather, if you could, um, use some um, nice big blocks of chocolate because I do want nice big chunks of this rather than sort of like small little choc chips. Now I'm using a dark chocolate today, uh, but you could do a milk chocolate if you want to. Okay, chocolate goes in. Next up, chopped roasted peanuts. And just fold that in. It's almost like there's more chocolate and peanuts than cookie dough. <laughs> oh, that's not a problem. <laughs> oh my goodness, it smells so good. 
Okay, cookie dough is ready to go. Uh, I'm gonna go in here with an ice cream scoop because it's easy and fun. <laughs> you could just get in here actually with your hands and just roll um, some little balls of the cookie dough. But I mean, look at that. It's like scooping ice cream, but it's cookie dough. Okay, so these need to go in the fridge 15 minutes um, just to chill down a little bit until we move on to the next part because we're not finished with these guys yet. There's more things to come. Okay, so these are out of the fridge, they're ready to go and you're going to think I'm a little crazy, but we're going to do like a cookie crumbing station here. <laughs> Trust me, this is gonna be epic. All right, okay, so first of all, I'm gonna get some of my peanuts into a little plate here. So these are just more chopped roasted peanuts. I've got some dark chocolate here and I have some more peanut butter. So I'm gonna get a little scoop of peanut butter and just smear that onto the top of each of these little ice cream balls of cookie dough. Okay, so here's how this goes. Grab yourself a little ball of cookie dough, sprinkle over some chocolate on the top, some chopped chocolate. Now into your peanuts, roll that around, woohoo, look at that, that is one loaded ball of cookie dough. Okay, keep going, and don't eat all that cookie dough, although it is really good <laughs> to eat. <laughs> I mean, really what you should be doing is like saving half the cookie dough, putting it in some ice cream. Okay, so these are ready to go. Um, I've got my oven at 160 Celsius. Now, cooking time between 15 and 20 minutes, and I say that because it depends on how big your scoops of cookie dough are, um, but you'll see you'll get a beautiful golden edge around, around the outside. We'll come back and have a look. All right, so things are currently smelling like cookie heaven. Now, these guys are gonna look, see, see how they've kind of got that, that golden edge, um, but if you kind of move them around now, they'll be very soft. So you need to exercise some patience uh, and just let them sit around for at least 10, even 15 minutes um, and just wait till they firm up a little bit. Don't touch them, Dax, because Okay, we're back. These cookies are looking amazing. Let's just get them out here. They're still a little warm and a little bit soft, but still good. Okay, should we get in here and have a look? Let's get in here and have a look. Okay, so just break one open. Oh, wow. That chocolate. I mean, look at that ooze. That's just oh, incredible. I love it. I love it so much. Um, but let's just try one, shall we? <laughs> Mm. That is, I mean, I call it a crack cookie for a reason because it's like it's like the mix of the saltiness and the sweet chocolate and the peanut and peanut butter and the, it's like literally telling you that you have to keep eating these for a long time. <laughs> Seriously addictive, oh my goodness. Mm. So yum. golden puffy pastry and inside the creamiest creamy chicken and mushroom filling with a few little special ingredients. Uh, this is my version of a creamy chicken and mushroom pot pie. Chicken pot pies done my way. You guys know there's gonna be a few surprises here. Uh, let's get going on the chicken part first of all. I am using chicken thighs. Now I know I've said it a hundred times, I am a thighs and legs girl. I love how juicy uh, it stays when it's simmered or baked. Um, but you could go ahead and use breast as well. Uh, you just want some nice chunks of chicken here. And I'm gonna marinate the chicken first of all. So I want some garlic. 
and some soy sauce. Yes, not your traditional chicken pot pie ingredient, but it's gonna add some beautiful salty umami flavors. And then a little pinch of white pepper. So I really like the white pepper here because actually white pepper is what we use in Thai cooking a lot more than black pepper. And I like that it's a little bit milder, not as harsh as like a black pepper, but you know, totally up to you guys, you could use black as well. Now give that a good mix. And then look, if you've got the time, you can leave this to marinate. I'm just gonna get straight into it and uh, start cooking. Uh, so I'm gonna add a little bit of oil into my pan. Now add in your chicken. I'm just gonna spread that chicken out in the pan so we get a nice sear on all those pieces. Anytime I'm making a sauce or a braise style of thing, it's, uh, you know, it's all about layering the flavor. So getting that nice sear, that nice color on the chicken, that's gonna give us some really good base flavor to work with. Okay, so that is looking like some good color right there. Same smell, delish. Um, all right, I'm just gonna sort of give everything a bit of a stir fry. And now what I wanna do is add in my mushrooms. Now, you wanna give those mushrooms time to get a little bit acquainted with the chicken and the soy sauce and all the good things going on in there. So after a couple of minutes, you can see the mushrooms have kind of wilted down a little, I guess, um, and released like the chicken and the mushrooms have released some of their juices. Now, I'm gonna go in here with some sour cream. And now here's our next little unconventional ingredient, um, white miso paste. So this guy is gonna give us some extra savory kick, uh, you know, that saltiness, the savoriness uh, that you get from miso paste. It's just gonna be a little surprise background ingredient. Now just mix all of that through. You'll have to give that miso paste a little bit of help there to dissolve a bit. And then I wanna gently simmer that. You've gotta be a bit careful with the sour cream. It can split easily if you uh, heat it up too much. So just simmer it really gently for a few minutes and wait for everything to kind of make friends in there. Okay, so this is looking and smelling amazing. I wanna thicken up that sauce a little bit more though. So I'm gonna add in some corn flour mixed with a little bit of water. And then magically everything becomes thick and glossy. Last thing, I'm gonna add in some spring onion. Wow, that is looking so lush, love it. All right, now I'm gonna fill up my little dishes here. About a one, one and a half cup capacity is what you're looking for here. And now for the pastry. Puff pastry is what I'm using and I'm just gonna go in here and just make some squares. Drape that over the top of that dish. Now you wanna brush these with some egg. My little tip here is use just the yolks because you'll get more of a beautiful golden color that way. So make sure you get all the sides as well. and then finish off with a little sprinkling of sesame seeds. I happen to have black ones, but white ones would be totally fine too. And then just to allow some of that steam to escape inside uh, those pies, I'm just gonna poke a couple of little holes in the top there, and then these go into the oven for about 20 minutes or until that top pastry is all puffy and golden and delicious. out that sunshine yellow deliciousness oh wow pure joy when you see little pies like that so cute okay so let's get these out onto a little serving board and that my friends is a very easy slight little bit of a twist uh, on a chicken pot pie now let me get in here and see what's going on I can't wait Oh, smells so good. Mm, that was the biggest mouthful ever. <laughs> but wow, that creamy chicken mushroom filling is such a star. Oh my goodness. 
Look at how smart, it's just, it's just pure joy guys. It's creamy, it's savory, it's chickeny, and then that beautiful like crusty, puffy, buttery pastry. Mm. Just out of this world crazy good. Oh, I hope you guys love this one as much as I do.